Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for the Connect Conference and this session that is focused on uh, an exciting new product from Learning A to Z called Running A to Z Adventure Zone. Um, the, the session is called Tying the Knot Effective Strategies for Integrating Reading and Writing Instruction to Boost K-5 Literacy. Uh, and I'm joined here today by Jeremy Thompson. Jeremy, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Will. Yeah, you bet. And so Jeremy's been involved. Uh, his background as an educator and administrator uh, lent a lot of value to the process of launching and beginning to communicate the value of writing instruction tied to reading instruction uh, as we're beginning to launch this new product. And today's session is focused on teachers, giving you a sneak preview of our new Writing A to Z Adventure Zone product. Uh, what I'm going to do here is share my screen, take you through a brief PowerPoint, uh, and then we're going to shift gears and actually go into a preview of the new Writing A to Z Adventure Zone product. Again, uh, I'm Will Stagel, Product Marketing Manager here at uh, Learning A to Z. So we're going to talk a little bit about what makes writing instruction challenging, uh, both uh, when it comes to teachers in the classroom and as well as students. Um, why writing instruction is so critical. There's been so much talk today about foundational skills on the literacy side, um, a lot of focus on uh, science of reading and balanced literacy. Uh, we want to talk about how writing plays into that broader discussion and where it can contribute uh, both from a literacy standpoint and beyond. And then we want to give you that sneak preview of writing A to Z Adventure Zone. Um, some of you may know we had a prior product called Writing A to Z. Um, this new product will ultimately become uh, the next generation and brand new product, but we're using the Adventure Zone tag as kind of a way to distinguish it. Um, so again, Jeremy, I wanted, wanted to talk and, and get your input as well on what makes writing instruction challenging today. One of the big things that we've heard is that teachers lack instructional knowledge and lack, lack writing skills that they bring to the classroom. So they're not always as comfortable uh, when it comes to writing as they are when they're when they're teaching kids to read. Well, that's true. And, and as you said, I mean, there are a few reasons. I think right now the most top of mind reason I would say is if, if you look across the board, uh, teachers feel overwhelmed, uh, stressed, and, um, and almost over slash underprepared, right? There are a lot of things that they have a lot of preparation for and a very high expectation for performance regarding, and then things that they just don't know anything about, um, and yet the expectation's still there. Um, so kind of teasing out what's of most value is already difficult given the stressors of, uh, of the current climate in classroom instruction. Yeah. So that's, that's number one. Number two, just generally speaking, a lot less is known about writing in the same way that we know things about reading. So when we talk about things like science of reading, we have lots of data and reading is regularly assessed and it's benchmarked and we have standards assessments that give us lots of data, both within an LEA, a district, a state and nationwide, right? Mm -hmm. But writing isn't uh, scored the same way. Uh, it's not scored as often. It's not scored as consistently. Most scoring for writing takes uh, place in um, in a school setting using something like a six plus one trait rubric. Um, there are a lot of different views and interpretations. There's some subjective that goes along with the objective, but none of that uh, rises to the level of the kind of data that we rely on when we talk about reading. Yeah, so, we've really seen that too, just in terms of the research that's out there, right? There, right. If there were a science of writing, the research behind that is, it, it doesn't have nearly the depth or breadth. That that's you right. So, so those two factors. And then third is, uh, I'm looking at the character, teaching writing is hard and it takes time. I guess that should be, and it takes time. That's right. uh, if you if you're a writing instructor, you get out your red pen and make sure that that was. Uh, this. We want to make sure you were all paying attention. That's right. <laughs> that's, um, that's that's our cue to talk about the grammar instruction piece of writing. There, there you go. Right. Um, uh, but it is hard, uh, and it does take time, and it's hard for the reasons that I just mentioned, as well as it's hard because it takes time, right? So things that take time and regular practice 
um, and many revisions uh, and unpacking, as you just said, is that a is that a grammar issue? Is that a syntax? Is that what you know? Where where do these errors we find when a child is writing fall into? What what is my approach to that? All of those things uh, involve lots of reflection, um, uh, a lot of analysis, a lot of understanding of the students where they're coming from. Uh, you could have uh, additional language acquisition issues, right, with second language learners and so on. Um, and so, but that that time effort component is crucial. So if I need to do more of something and take more time with it, where do I find that time? Um, and how do I prioritize that? Um, so I think all of that goes into what makes it particularly challenging. And at the end of the day, a teacher may just say to themselves, but I need to focus on what's going to be assessed. Mm -hmm. I need to focus on what those critical components are that are gonna be looked at from that 100 foot view and make sure that my students are prepared to meet that challenge. Um, and if writing doesn't fall within that um, uh, environment of expectation and performance outcomes and using data to drive instruction, because of all the things I just said, then the thing that takes more time is going to end up with less time. Um, and then it becomes even more challenging. Well, that brings us to the next point, right? Just even scheduling that time for instruction, regardless of what time it takes within a given school day, schedules already packed, already full. You're, you know, you and I have talked about that in terms of the three hours don't exist anymore. Reading, writing, arithmetic, writing has been kind of sandwiched into reading and that even then finding time within those blocks can be a challenge, right? Uh, absolutely, and, and there isn't enough time in, in the day, right? There, there actually isn't. Um, that, that's, not a, you know, that's not an exaggeration mm -hmm. in terms of the kinds of things that are gonna be on a teacher's menu for things that, that they're required to, to cover and to cover consistently and well. I mean, it's also one thing to say, oh, I, I did it, but, mm -hmm. What was the evidence? What were the outcomes? Um, and so any and in a, an effective cycle of instruction, you are looking back as much as you are looking forward. Um, and that iterative process also is time consuming. Um, and so uh, the, the, the time we can't emphasize enough that time matters in this conversation, right? In an ideal world, you'd have all the time. Uh, but you don't, so what do you do about that? Mm -hmm. um, given that writing is something in which both that art and science is always in a push and pull, mm -hmm. right? it's, uh, between um, having the discrete knowledge and skill sets to be able to communicate something clearly, but also, is that an opinion? Is that evidence-based? Uh, what are your thoughts and feelings about the subject? Is it fiction or nonfiction, and how do I grade your imagination, right? Um, so those are the kinds of things that become challenges when, when you start thinking about what that time really is about. Yeah, and then one thing that can compound that is a lesson plan that may, may give you what you need in terms of the elements and components uh, to teach, uh, but, but the feedback we often get is that lesson plans traditionally are hard to follow, hard to implement, too time intensive, too, too rigid to fit into the kind of schedules that we talk about. Right. So, if, for example, if you said, as opposed to having lesson plans for writing, if you said, uh, and, and again, and we'll get into this a little bit more, I understand, but, um, you know, the, the difference between, so there are different, different activities that go along with writing and, and different things you can write about, mm -hmm. right? So the, the subject can be something else and then you're writing about it. So what are you grading when you're doing that? So is the lesson plan around the social studies lesson? Um, and is there writing that's part of it? And are you grading that writing? And are you teaching writing components as part of that? Or is that just separate? And so mm -hmm. now is the writing evidence of the subject matter as opposed oh, to right, it, it in and of itself. So, um, so I'd say that the, really the thing about the lesson plan part of it is that um, Yes, if you were to, to look through a teacher's 
uh, journal of the kind of lessons they're planning for throughout a week. Um, if you started adding all those uh, discrete skills for writing within each one of those assignments, you can imagine the lesson plan just kind of goes on and on and on, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, that by itself just becomes um, almost a barrier to what happens in the classroom is the expectation that you're following off this uh, a scripted approach, right? But without right. that, you don't have anything to know what you're scaffolding. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So those are the kind of problems that we're going to show you uh, in a preview of the product that we've helped to overcome. Um, we want to talk a little bit about why writing instruction itself is is so critical. There's been such a huge emphasis, emphasis on reading, so much research when it comes to uh, reading and, and uh, literacy. Um, I want to share some statistics with you that we've been able to uh, take a look at through our own research and our own involvement in, in uh, the community of writing educators. Um, some surprising things to me, and again, this isn't the most recent study, but within the last 10 years, uh, one study showed uh, a survey of 500 grade three through eight teachers, just barely over half said they enjoyed teaching writing. So going into an environment um, where you're already uncomfortable and, and not uh, not feeling excited about the subject is already is already a barrier that, that we want to make sure we help overcome. Both well, and, 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 and you could even and you could even add to that by pointing out that um, uh, that a lot of uh, a lot of data uh, current research on the necessity of nurturing uh, communities of uh, writers, right, starts from a place of we're passionate about it. We love to do it. We're all writers ourselves mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and we want to share the, the power of literacy, right? Yeah, um, we know that that has a, a deep uh, sustainable uh, impact within uh, learning communities. But obviously, if you're starting at a, a statistic like only 55 percent are saying they enjoy it, uh, how are they going to encourage students to enjoy writing when it is such a, quote, chore in the first place and they haven't made that shift for it to be culturally embraced within their yep. learning community? Right, exactly. Um, by the way, just a little bit of housekeeping that I missed too. Uh, for those of you who have joined this session, there is a Q&A panel. Uh, you can ask questions during the session. We do have uh, our team monitoring those. Um, and that we also welcome your comments as well as your questions. So I would love your feedback in terms of your experience as educators. How do you feel about writing today? Uh, where you gauge both your confidence level in it uh, and whether it's a subject that you, you feel um, that you enjoy uh, or not as well. Uh, sorry, Jeremy. Just want to make sure to interject there to make sure we're getting some feedback as we're as we're talking about this as sure. well. And then if you if you look at the next number, most teachers surveyed said they taught writing 15 minutes a day. So yeah. I'm 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 guessing that's a description of um, explicit, systematic writing instruction. Sure. So right. 15 minutes a day just would never cut anything, right? Yeah. I, I, it. it when you start thinking about what it takes to develop um, all the neural pathways for establishing uh, habits of minds and habitual practices, 15 minutes a day would barely get you into that zone where because you do it 15 minutes a day, it effectively becomes a habit of yours. Right. That's a very narrow window of habituating behavior, right? So right. aside, I'm saying aside from content, aside from what the 15 minutes of instruction is doing, if it was just free writing for 15 minutes, you probably could over time just have it be a habit to pick up a pencil and write for 15 minutes. But my guess is that even if you're saying taught for 15 minutes a day, there's the lesson structure, there's what the teacher is teaching, how much time is taken up with that. So I would guess that the actual writing part of that 15 minutes is maybe only five minutes of concentrated writing. If you, it, you know, if you just kind of stripped away what that 15 minutes is. So in other words, if you wrote 
for 15 straight minutes a day, you could probably develop a habit of just doing that. But you certainly wouldn't develop a habit of mind that says, oh, I'm going to do that and think critically about it and mm -hmm. review and revise it and edit it and look at word choice and look at grammar and syntax and you know, right. None of that. Sure. Yeah. So, so both the time on tax, time on task and the explicit piece of it in terms of the instruction in your goals and objectives and guidance. Right. Are all and, and you can see the reasons for that. If yeah. fewer than a third of teachers yeah. polled have even taken a class devoted to teaching writing. Which again, these are all from the same survey, which tells you why so few said they enjoyed it, right? They weren't really empowered or trained uh, to, to have confidence to go in and, and actually well, enjoy it. And I think you can see too, if 44% of managers felt college grads lacked essential writing skills, we're talking about in the workforce, so that that's a broad spectrum of mm -hmm. backgrounds and degrees and and, uh, and uh, not prior knowledge sets, et cetera. That's cl that's clearly less than half feel that those graduates um, are fully prepared uh, in having foundational and essential writing skills uh, in their toolkit. So, right. Right. if that's not so there, right? If that's not there, it's likely that those people aren't enjoying writing as much anyway. Uh, uh, they haven't taken specific classes on how to be effective writing teachers. Um, they say that they don't have enough time to do it, and they only have a small window to focus on, quote, writing instruction at 15 minutes. You can see why we end up with the National Commission on Writing has labeled it a neglected skill. All those things, right? It's a perfect storm. Yeah. Right? that would lead to yep. that. So it's and not just one thing, it's 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 everything. It's institutional, it's structural, it's environmental, um, it's developmental, um, it's it's academic in terms of the educational uh, 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 experience and mastery of skills of those people who will end up in a classroom teaching. So yep. everything's working against you, right, in that regard. Right, and we saw statistics there that just show where there is any explicit assessment of those writing skills it's a challenge but obviously we all know you know the big gap that the educators are trying to solve for today is focused mostly on literacy where writing is a component to that and you know just want to spend a moment reinforcing and talking about how critical writing instruction and practice <coughs> is to literacy broadly so there's a big focus on all of those foundational skills but, but clearly writing has a role to play in the development uh, and practice of, of those skills as well, right? Well, sure. So there's, I would just step back and say there's there's really two things about this. One is that uh, most recently, I think many educators have come to fully appreciate that, uh, that explicit, systematic, um, uh, uh, word recognition, language comp comprehension skills, are needed in the classroom, right? So we've, we've turned that corner. Um, uh, whatever that reading war was has been fought, and I guess won in that regard, right? Um, but even just that, just understanding that, that's a, that's a huge shift and a valuable one. But you can look at data that shows you that probably only a quarter of primary teachers believe that it should be taught explicitly and systematically anyway. So there's a huge gap, right? In terms of what does this mean? Well, it's valuable to have, but does that does that impress me enough to say, oh, that has to be the central piece of, of my uh, early childhood literacy program. That's debatable to the extent to, to which that's been embraced. Um, and yes, almost all of the time, it's very hard to see this kind of information that's linked to the writing experience or what's happening developmentally, cognitively, myelin brain connections, et cetera, et cetera, as writing interwoven with reading. It's, it's very hard to, to find that. And yet we know from researchers that that's essential. So mm -hmm. one, taking the step to embrace this kind of explicit systematic understanding of phonemic awareness and sight recognition and uh, phonological awareness, vocabulary, et cetera, right? But then not even seeing that as being tied explicitly to writing practices, that just tells you how, how far we've 
come and how far we still have to go. So we got here, right? This is a this is a good plateau. Everybody should be here or approaching here in terms of um, uh, this kind of science of uh, understanding. Um, but just getting people to that plateau is still a climb. Um, and then once there, to the extent that they are still seeing it as a silo of reading instruction, mm -hmm. that may have things that you are writing about, but not as an explicit writing uh, instructional paradigm, is is still something that that has yet to really take place. I think. Yeah, that's a great point. So beyond literacy, though, writing obviously ha touches on a lot of the other hot button topics when it comes to education today. Social emotional learning is another great example, right? Where we hear a lot about that, but we don't hear about it always in the context of, of writing instruction in practice. Well, I, in fact, I don't know that we hear enough about it in terms of literacy, period. And, mm -hmm. and I would make a case that um, a, a literate individual, like if we go back and look at the data on what happens when you are not uh, reading at grade level by third grade, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how that gap continues to widen to fifth grade and how it continues to widen and leads to high dropout rates, uh, uh, drug use. Um, I mean, the, the, the impact sociologically and economically is huge. But in third grade, it looks like a small gap and it continues to grow. But that gap, if you thought about literacy as being entirely about making social, emotional learning and culturally responsive connections to self, right? The whole, you know, text to self moment, right? And, and mm -hmm. self to text and self to world and so on. Like those steps are entirely about social, emotional learning, right? Because in, in your slide, you have building a writing community, expressing emotions and experiences, absolutely. but. The capacity to read well, which means to decode the text and encode your response to it through writing as an, a form of an expression that says, oh, I understand this. Here's the evidence for what, I, what I've read and my understanding of it. Oh, and here are my thoughts, opinions, feelings, suggestions, conversations, questions, etc. All of that is about those things on your slide, and mm -hmm. you almost can't do that without writing, right? In the sense that reading is the input and writing is that output, and if you don't have that going on that's, that's tethered to the experience, woven into it, and then the opportunity to write about your thoughts, your feelings, your questions, et cetera, provides opportunities then for that active participation in the learning process. Without that written text, you don't have that to, to anchor a student's uh, experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Well, we're going to shift gears here now. We're actually going to show you, uh, well, first we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the new writing it is adventure zone and then we're going to show that product to you so we've talked about the problems and challenges that educators face today we've talked about how critical it is we've talked about the gaps uh, that exist uh, in writing instruction practice and outcomes now we want to talk about the solution that uh, that we've defined developed and we'll be bringing to market uh, in the coming year here uh, so right why writing it is the adventure zone again th these are the kinds of things the teachers told us and jeremy i'm sure you can relate to this i'm sure you've heard many of the same things um, they wanted standards aligned grade level lesson plans. Uh, they wanted instruction that follows the writing process. Um, layers of support for teachers, meaning they didn't want to have to go through a ton of PD up front. You know, again, for those teachers that we saw in the survey who said, I've never in received any training on writing instruction. We wanted something, we wanted to create something that allowed them to get started and have that PD uh, and support in the form of videos and podcasts and articles. Uh, along the way here. And then the other thing that um, they asked for was grammar instruction and practice in a way that was once you've rostered your students, that stuff's a sign for you automatically. There's digital practice exercises that are built in them that's just automatically then distributed and assigned to your students as part of the process. Um, I mentioned the embedded professional development that's kind of part of the layers of support there for teachers. 
And then again, making this a truly digital experience with digital writing tools uh, that are part of the solution as well. Um, anything I missed there, Jeremy, anything that kind of jumps out to you as the sort of thing, you know, you've seen our solution a little bit. I know you've looked at other sure. others on the market and you're certainly aware that not everyone uses a digital solution today in their classroom. Well, so here, here's, here's one of those uh, great uh, ironies of uh, 21st century technologies, right? Mm -hmm. Here we are talking about writing, and yet the best way today for teachers to ensure that their students are having more of those experiences that are explicit, that are uh, um, uh, systematic, that do follow a scope and sequence, that are scaffolded, that are differentiated, that do collect data, that informs uh, instructional practice, all the things that you want to hit on that you don't have time for as a classroom teacher and that you feel overwhelmed and burdened to address and you don't feel like you have the skill set to do so adequately, the solution to all of that for writing in particular is a digital platform. Mm -hmm. that, that would be true regardless of the digital platform to some extent, i.e. if it does those things, but not every digital tool has all those assets and, and uh, has been considered and constructed in that way. And I think one of the things that's impressed me about learning A to Z is the extent to which their development team um, is made up of people who were classroom teachers. This is a, a, a teacher-centered company. Um, and so their responsiveness to these issues, needs, and concerns, I think is, is, uh, is really edifying of what the outcome is regarding the product. So yes, all those things are true and digital environments allow for more of that to happen than not. Great. So we talked a little bit about some of the challenges here in terms of why writing is so hard to teach. Um, I wanted to highlight some of the ways that writing A to Z and writing A to Z Adventure Zone uh, addresses those. So again, research has shown the National Council on Teaching Teacher Quality has talked about how Many of the programs out there don't explicitly cover writing instruction. Um, time, again, we talked about that. Reviewing students' work is time consuming and requires a lot from the teacher. Um, lacking options, right? So there are just not a lot of programs that fit the description that we put up here and that you've described well in terms of what a digital writing solution should look like and should include. Um, so that our new solution includes pro Point of use professional, I'm uh, sorry, point of use professional learning and development for teachers. So lesson by lesson, unit by unit, if there's a gap in, in their skill set, their knowledge or their context, we provide it to them. And so they can go to a whole section and either search on a topic, uh, they can filter based on videos if they prefer that, or podcasts or articles. And of course, the lesson plans themselves includes all kinds of tips uh, and instruction as well. You know, and, and Will, you, you can yeah. almost, like, if that's all that was happening, that, mm -hmm. that would be a huge positive change for most teachers. Uh, I, in other words, so I'm not going to get a professional development um, uh, encounter that is a one-size-fits-all. I'm going to get something that is targeted and differentiated for me at the point at which I need it. Right. Mm -hmm. So being able to align that is so important and has so much value all by itself. Like if that's all that was happening, all the things that we looked at in terms of the data about teacher comfort, teacher preparedness, teacher understanding, et cetera, is is hugely addressed there. And I would guess um, that that would increase a teacher's comfort, enthusiasm and joy in teaching writing. So if that's all that happens, you'd be, sure. making, you'd be making significant progress. But um, wait, there's more, right? But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Which includes um, automating basic grammar instruction. And what that means is students are assigned some interactive digital lessons that they can perform on their own uh, and prescribe videos and other content. So the grammar instruction is kind of addressed uh, in, a, in an automated and digital way that's fun and engaging for students that allows the teachers then to focus more on the writing instruction and practice itself. You know, so uh, as a classroom teacher, if you're walking around a classroom and students are writing and you're and you're kind of hovering around and you're stopping, looking over the shoulder um, and asking those kinds of questions for 
the embedded and formative assessment opportunities, the teachable moment of, oh, let me, let me show this to you. I can see what you're doing. I can see where you went wrong, et cetera, right? Uh, the fact that you have that automated, the fact that those lesson plans include those conference look fors, I mean, those are all, that's like, so the, 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 what I just described of the, the teacher floating behind the student, now, now your teacher has another teacher that's floating behind them, that's sitting on their shoulder, that's saying, hey, yeah. take a look. That, that's a, a phenomenal shift too, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So why writing Adventure Zone? Oh, I went back a slide, sorry guys. Uh, so uh, next step is to show you guys the actual solution that we've developed here. Uh, and give you highlights on how it works. Now, this is a preview. The product is not to market yet. Uh, so my preface to this is going to be that you're going to see some things that are that are in development that may change a little bit once they actually make it to market. Uh, and Jeremy, you've had a little preview of this yourself already prior to today's session. Um, I'm, while I'm squi switching screens here, tell me a little bit about what, uh, what, what struck you or popped out at you um, as we were uh, as we were taking a look at that previously? Um, well, I'd say that uh, obviously besides the things that we just described as being uh, s structural or, um, or component level based, i.e. these are things that are built in um, that are already uh, appealing and I think proactive, constructive, um, suggestive of, uh, of uh, a practice that would nurture a community of, of uh, writers in a classroom. Those things are all phenomenally helpful. Um, I think th for me, the big takeaway was just how, how really well thought out these, um, uh, the grammar packs and, and modules were designed, right? Just from, a, from an instructional design standpoint, mm -hmm. you can tell there's, there's a lot of thought and reflection. And again, I, I just go back to, and now having met some of those who are working on the curriculum team, um, how passionate they are about it. And you can see that passion e even in, in this kind of clinical setting of, you know, digital remote learning plan lesson plans. Um, but you can you can still feel that, right? Like there's mm -hmm. there's a real sense of we we're committed to making sure that that your classroom has a, a, a you know, an inspired um, uh, focus on literacy, and I think that's something that comes through. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you can see that just even in, like you said, there's uh, the, the UI isn't designed to be easy and intuitive, um, but in, in certain screens like this, this is your, your login screen once we join, once we join uh, the product, it's giving you your little dashboard view, and we're going to drill into some of the details here. So my first re reaction is this is very clean and easy to find what you're looking for. Uh, but I'm glad that once you dig into the details and you see the lesson plans, the exercise and the videos, there's a lot here that's put into the energy of characters that we'll introduce as you see this, the language that we use, I think the energy and enthusiasm and the tone even of the professional development pieces, a lot of that comes through. So what we're looking at here, by the way, is simply a login screen once we've joined the product. Uh, the great thing about it for teachers is it gives them an instant view of the teach of the students they have enrolled, the assignments they've assigned, the lesson plans and units that they're working on. You'll notice here the grammar pack assignments, explicit grammar stuff is, is highlighted here, along with module assignments that you've digitally assigned to your students. What we're going to do is go into uh, unit two, grade three, uh, and we're going to show you how this is all laid out and organized. Once I click there, you'll notice these are accordion modules. So unit by unit, module by module. I can see uh, lesson plans that are available to me, and I wanted to go into, we were talking about opinion writing a little bit, so I wanted to go into uh, the opinion writing piece a little bit here. Uh, once we accordion that, you can see the individual lessons and how they're sequenced. Let's take a look at genre studies, lesson three, linking words. Once I click into that as an educator, it's going to give me a little thumbnail of the full lesson plan here. And then it's going to highlight the teacher objectives, the student objectives, uh, and the materials. Uh, and then the great thing about it is you can see that this lesson is broken down into minute by minute increments once we look at each step in the sequence. So five minutes for setting the stage here, pairing students with a partner, 
um, asking volunteers to share their response to the rest of the group, reminding students that opinion is something that different people might not agree to about, providing sample dialogue links, and then little tips like social emotional uh, tips here, like encouraging students to actively listen as their partners talk, uh, talking about not just paying attention, watching the speaker, not interrupting, and asking good questions. And I think you've talked so about that as, as something important and critical from a social and emotional learning standpoint when it comes to sharing writing and sure. sharing feedback, well, right? It, it's it's essential. And so, and I think that uh, that is an excellent example of what I was describing, right? That, mm -hmm. that having things like social emotional tips that provide a context for what active listening is and to remind the instructor about the importance of that embedded within the lesson to then add the sample dialogue. Um, uh, those are the kinds of things that uh, that are so impactful for, for teachers to have at their fingertips. And I think are the kinds of things that um, that will continue to foster healthy conversations in classrooms around, as you were saying, boy, and here we are talking about opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. So so writing is a risk taking thing all by itself. Now add your opinion to that um, and you need to feel safe and you need to feel secure. And so the fact that this lesson already says, you know, and the model of it is I do, we do, you do. Right. So so having that kind of supported, enabled, um, uh, structured um, uh, opportunity for within our relationship. I'm going to model, we're going to do it together, right? So every step of the way shows that these lessons are encouraging teachers to be um, uh, in engaged in a way that provides uh, safe, secure opportunities for student expression and exploration. Um, that's, yep. that's hugely valuable, right? Like, you could do a lot of other things, um, but if you weren't doing that, you you may not really be creating a, a healthy space for for uh, literacy growth. Yeah, and for writing development. So under the I do teach here, you'll notice there's a link to a video. Uh, this video is automatically assigned to your students when you click the assign option here, along with games and practice activities. But from the teacher view, I can preview this and it's worth taking a look I'm going to pause it for, uh, before I start. It's going to introduce some of the characters who are part of um, both of our new next generation products, both Foundations A to Z and Writing A to Z Adventure Zone. So DJ Doodles here is going to talk a little bit about genre study and linking words. I'm going to play just a little snippet from this video to give everybody the feel for the kind of content that's here for students and for teachers. Can you hear the audio, Jeremy? Uh, no, I can't hear him talking. DJ Doodles, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, you might want it. Yeah, over there. There you go. Well, it, I'm hearing the audio on my side. I want to see what. Oh, interesting. What, maybe there's a logistical thing I need to do here so that you guys hear it. Let's let me take a look real quick. And if not, um, again, we do have a product tour available. Uh, so those of you on the call, uh, your your homework will be to take a look at this in the product tour, but at least show the an animation. Oh, you know what? We can turn on captions. In those oh, look at that. Okay. Although, he happens to be saying what's being written, but. <laughs> <laughs> that helps me, right? <laughs> but at least now you know. Well, if you'd like to see it in Spanish, Jeremy, because I know you're working on your on your uh, Spanish language. Sure. We can do that. Oh, look at that. There you go. That. So the great thing is a lot, all of these lessons are guided by a whole cast of, of colorful characters. They're all short. This one's only five minutes here. Very topical, very focused on uh, the specific skills and the objectives being supported uh, in the lesson plan itself. So, you know, Will, if, if you just take a step back to that, and I just want to, as for a, for a teacher that's thinking about all this, but besides mm -hmm. the fact that these are very uh, well thought out, um, that they're uh, developed and designed by those who were in your 
choose once upon a time as a classroom teacher, most likely. Um, just think about that, the, the content of that, just that one video alone, right? As a classroom teacher, I'm doing that all on a chart, right? Or I'm doing it on my interactive whiteboard, but I'm writing those things out and I'm taking my highlighter out and I'm showing and I'm waiting to say, what, what do you think opinion is? Where's the opinion statement and so on, right? Mm -hmm. And if, if I'm a classroom teacher that doesn't feel like that's my strong suit, I'm doing less of that. Mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, it, it's still that time on task for the adult that has to make sure that all of those things are in place in order for this lesson to happen. Everything here is done in a way where I, I could do it without knowing anything about what the objectives are in the lesson and still be able to follow it and understand what's being said and appreciate the, um, the ELL tip in this case, right? Yeah. Like, oh, that's a good thing for me to be aware of. I didn't, I didn't think of that when I started the lesson. Oh, that's important. Um, so those little, those little reminders and the degree to which it is doing, you hate to say like it's doing the work for you, but your role as a teacher then is to nurture that experience, right? And to ensure that it's, that there's opportunities for it. Um, and then take a step back. It's again, it's one of the real advantages of digital tools especially ones as sophisticated and as well thought out as these, because it's going to give you everything that you're going to need in order to be successful. So it takes your guesswork and, and your own insecurity about the experience out of the equation. Like I'm already feeling more confident just by looking at this and going, oh, well, I haven't been in the classroom for a while. I could just follow this tomorrow and know that my students are going to get their needs met when it comes to, to, um, to these uh, skills. Yeah, that's great. And you can see here, you mentioned the ELL tip. So have students identify words and phrases in their home language that are used to connect opinions and reasons such as translations for because and for example. Um, after walking the, through the, the I do section of, of um, the lesson, here's a link then to a preview of the game. This is kind of the check for understanding game. Uh, that teachers can preview here, but that are assigned it's, is assigned to the student digitally. So when they go into kids A to Z, like they do with any of the other solutions, this is the kind of game that they'll see. So in this case, tap to underline the writer's opinion. Living in a city is much better than living in the country. First, there is always something interesting to do in a city. For example, there are lots of restaurants, museums, theaters, and parks. Next, it is easy to get from place to place in a city because there are buses, subways, and taxis. So I can go in here and I can underline those opinions. Here's an example. And then we go to the next. And we have more opportunities to do that. And by the way, as a teacher, I can preview and I can see the correct answers here, but students don't get those in advance. So they have the opportunity to go in digitally, perform this exercise. It's all scored and tabulated and reported for the teacher automatically. So to your point, a lot of the things that they used to have to do manually when it comes to grading, scoring, and checking for understanding are all done within the within the product. Well, and even this, just as an as an exercise brain break, let's try this out. I'm going to experiment. I'm I'm just kind of I'm the student that's like uh, free versing this. Okay, I'm clicking on stuff already. Just between uh, the first slide and this is a scaffolded uh, um, understanding. So it started with identify your uh, the opinion. Now tap to underline the reasons that support the opinion. So now you're at the next, right? So all those things were just laid out in the lesson. Now mm -hmm. they're being retaught in a fresh way that's, like you said, completely 100% accessible, accessible to the student at their, uh, at, at their pace, at their, at their uh, level of readiness for engagement, right? But again, you now have... A, a, a data set that you can look back on and say, oh, if I can now sample 15 students out of my 25 students that all arrived at this conclusion, maybe that's an opportunity for me to go back and revisit what we thought of as fact versus opinion and so on, right? Um, right. And, and you would have had to do a whole bunch of um, scoring and then coming back to your student population with that understanding, whereas here it's just done. The, that that instantaneous nature of if you're if you're using this in a lab or or something like that, right? Or where students have their one-to-one -one devices, 
then you get that feedback instantaneously. You can see exactly where where things might need to be addressed. And then the lesson plan is going to do that. Right. And then that get, gets reinforced with guided practice. As you can yep. see here, this is all laid out, including some teacher tips. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, these, these time increments, right? There was a real focus. I think you remember this talking to the development team in, in addressing the challenge of fitting writing instruction into the school day, right? So even though what we have here uh, in total, right, is an hour of instruction, I can fit half an hour in here, set the stage, go to the I do, and get into the guided practice. And if I have to move on after 30 minutes, right, then we can get into the you do, into closure, and into enrich and teach pieces yep. in another half an hour the next the next day that this is available. Well, so, and, and that's right. And essentially, it's it's taking care of the progress monitoring for you, so that you know there's no way for you to get lost in where you were in your lesson planning because it, you, you get as far as you got, and then you've got the next part to go into. So it, it's just waiting for you. That's right. Yeah, and again, that's the great thing about it, right? Module by module, unit by unit, lesson by lesson, everything's very clearly and easily mapped out. And we saw that dashboard at the very beginning. So the moment you log in, you can see where you're at and where your students are at. So again, if I jump back here to just to lesson plans, you can see it's all broken up by grade level into units and modules, all as an explicit scope and sequence. But you also have uh, what we're calling collections so that if you're using this as a supplemental solution rather than core, you can go in and you can pick and choose. So all of those writing skill packs, right, are components of individual lessons here. So if I scroll down to uh, an opinion writing module, you'll notice here we can see the opinion writing video like we saw earlier. And then we also have the exercise related to that that you can either present or assign. Right. So again, and, and, and there's your assessment piece and easy to, to plug in and play. I think um, both the hybrid quality of uh, anywhere, anytime is also balanced by that it can be a full or integrated uh, uh, curriculum. And by the way, one of the things that, uh, that hasn't been mentioned explicitly and should be is mm -hmm. this goes to fifth grade. Yeah, that's right. That, that, that's hugely impactful because the kinds of issues that are dealt with at third, fourth, and fifth grade for students that haven't had these kinds of foundational skills, right? If you start getting into the universe of everything we just said about teaching writing, plus now you're working with students who are in the fourth grade, but who haven't had those foundation skill opportunities and experiences, your curriculum may be driving you in other directions, but you know how fundamental it is for your students to get this kind of content. Use those, uh, those opportunities that are uh, quick and easy, consumable, five minutes, give you good information, give them good information, plug it in and play, knowing that at least there's that. So, it, you know, at the end of the day, if there are all those other pressures, what are you going to do? Your curriculum's already laid out. This isn't part of it, et cetera. Well, it can absolutely be integrated within that very easily and in a way that's fun and that has high student engagements. Um, I think is super valuable. You're you're not going to twist their arm to do it. They're going to say, "Oh, this is fun. This is neat," right. um, and it's giving you tons of information that you wouldn't have had otherwise. So that the the K five I think is valuable, but also that it's both a standalone and something that can be used as an intervention for differentiation. All of that other you know, that those two things make it hugely valuable for for a, for a school. Right. I'm going to shift gears here with the time we've got left. We did say this was a sneak peek. So we're again, we're focusing on the teacher experience here. Um, for those of you who are familiar with any learning A to Z products, this is all accessible um, the way that RAS Plus is, the way that Science A to Z, Vocabulary A to Z, they all go into the Kids A to Z portal. They can access those, those assignments there. So we're not going to showcase that as much. I did want to touch on professional development, though, since we talked a lot about the fact there's embedded uh, a professional development here. So that section is available to you within the product by grade level. 
uh, and also by medium. So you can choose articles, videos, podcasts, all of the above. Uh, we have examples. Let me, let me uh, here's an example of a video focusing on embracing your students' bilingualism, where that's, we, you saw ELL tips and other places through the product also. There was another one I wanted to show you uh, related to genre study. Again, you'll notice all these are, are five minutes or less, small digestible pieces broken up by grade level. Again, doesn't have to be the ex exclusive to the grade level when it comes to getting a little primer uh, for you to orient yourself uh, at the beginning of your lesson planning or even when you're midstream there, if there's something that you need wanna focus in on. And again, whether you're a visual learner and you like videos, you like to read, or you wanna listen to a podcast uh, on, your, on your way to the classroom or not, uh, those are all available to you within within the product and you can tell here just scrolling through this is just one grade level and you can see there's a ton of content here and that library will continue to build uh, all the way up to launch well, yes and, and we were just talking about the role of formative assessments right so and there it is right it's one two three down and two over um yep right there so we were just talking about that and if somebody goes oh yeah formative assessments what am i doing about that well let me take a little refresher um, I think it's what three minutes, 40 seconds. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so what an opportunity to go. Oh, yeah. You know, because when we were talking about that time on task and classroom pressures and so on, it's just easy to get lost in the what are you chasing? Right. I got to get to the end of the lesson. Oh, but formative assessments, those are those uh, those wonderful opportunities to dipstick my student, my students understandings. Um, Here's a little refresher to make sure that I'm thinking about that. I'm cognizant. It's top of mind. Um, and, uh, and, and here's a tool that I can use to get me re-engaged and, and on that path, right? Boom, just like that. Fantastic. Well, great. Thank you, Jeremy, for joining me today and giving your perspectives. Um, we're super excited about the launch of this product. Uh, today, what's available to you is kind of a, uh, an interactive tour that highlights a lot of the elements that you've seen uh, from the product today. We hope this gives you some perspective on how uh, all of the thought and intention that went into that scope and sequence of lessons K through five, how we put a lot of thought into creating very easy to consume, very digestible professional development components within the product, how we've offloaded a lot of the grammar instruction, the fact that we've given it to you both in the form of that scope and sequence and in these nice little module forms where you can pick and choose between grammar uh, and writing assignments. And we look forward to your feedback and input uh, as we go to market with this product um, and uh, once it's launched and available to you as teachers. Jeremy, thanks again for your time and thanks everyone for attending today's session. Thanks, Will. Good luck, everybody.